I was 29 years old. I went to the dentist's office. They were using laughing gas at the time. I had never had a drink, never used drugs, never smoked, hardly ever took aspirin. I think my body just said, what is this? And I went into anaphylactic shock. So one minute I was in the dentist's chair, the next minute I was up on the ceiling looking down at this body. And as I looked at my 29-year-old body, I felt as though it was just a piece of clothing. I had a fondness for it. I knew it. I had used it well, but it was time to go to the Salvation Army. I wasn't connected to it. I felt no fear, no pain, no anxiety. The dentist was kind of freaking out, and I was trying to talk to him from up there and say it was okay, but of course he didn't get it. Within this, this I had no sense of time. There was no anxiety. There was no sense of passing time. So I don't know how long I was up there in the corner. But the next thing I knew, it was as though I had turned around and I was going into a tunnel. And my mother, who had been dead for 15 years, was right at the tunnel. I can still see it. And she was beautiful and whole and vibrant and healthy. And she did not die that way. She was healed. And her arms were outstretched to me. And... We communicated telepathically, so our mouths didn't move, but I thought, and she received, and she thought, and I heard. And I thought, I miss you. And what came back to me was, I know. So her arms were around me, and I was not able to tell her I loved her before she died. And I said, I love you. And she said, I know. And my ego was not present, because my ego here would have said, I wanted to stay with my mother for years and years and years and tell her every single first date I had and my wedding and all about my child. The ego was not present because I knew from a soul level at that moment that she had always been with me. We had never been apart. I, I knew that. I still know that. And so with that, I, I was drawn into a tunnel that, to me, the, the words I can describe it are almost an opalescent blue beautiful, beautiful. And at the end of the tunnel was a pinpoint of light, and I couldn't do anything but go toward it. And so I went toward this light, and as I got to this light, it became bigger and brighter, almost like looking into the sun, but it wasn't painful to look into this light. And the light was in front of me, and then the light was around me, and then I was in the light, and then I knew I was the light. As a drop of water in the ocean is not separate, the light and I were made of the same substance. And I was home. Bliss doesn't come close to the word, but I knew in that moment that I was forgiven for anything I thought was unforgivable. I was loved beyond all measure in a way that I'd never been loved before. And I wanted to stay there. And again, in the same telepathic way as with my mother, I heard a voice that said to me, and you can call this light whatever you want because words really get in the way of what it was. But this light said to me, you must go back. And with all the chutzpah I had, I responded and said, no. And the light said, you have work to do. You must go back. And again, I yelled with everything I had, no. And then I felt and I heard like a churning, like I was in a blender, coming back down through the tunnel. And the next thing I knew, I was in the uh, dentist chair. And The dentist thought that he had resuscitated me, so he he can have the credit. (laughs) And my life changed as a result of that. Now, when I came back, I was disoriented in a way of, now what? Because I wanted to stay there. And my sense was, if I got to be back here, it better be good. Because it really, the, the difference, the comparison was that this is like sludging through mud compared to the ease and the love that's there. And it was shortly after that experience that, and I was having these feelings of now what, that I was reading a pa- uh, newspaper fully open. I turned the page, and there was a full page article on hospice, and the word yes just came up off the page, and I've been working in hospice ever since. So that's my story. <laughs>